Hey, how's the weekend? So today I'm going to talk a little bit about the new stuff that I got uh, that's been delivered to me. I have been hesitated to whether I really want to do this today because I still do have some new board games that are still uh, stuck in delivery. Uh, and there's two big crates. Uh, one of them is actually a major, major game, uh, which I'm quite into playing. I've been playing on TTS quite a lot, um, even though my game hasn't arrived, but it's really so good that I think I'm quite addicted to it. So let's start. Today I'll be talking a little bit about uh, not just board games, and but some of the accessories and stuff I bought. So why don't we just clear all the board game accessories first, before we even start talking about the board game. Okay, well so this is my Lord of the Rings uh play map so you can see that i also have all the journey in middle earth play map so these are like pretty good play map i bought uh, they just function as the normal normal things that's below my gaming table anyway so this is my gaming table okay so the first thing i want to talk about is this okay does it look cool so this is the side you can't turn this you can't move this neither can you move this yeah so but you can move this it's uh it's a counter okay so so what was this so this is this came about is because i uh, there's a lot of games that require some counting and something like that and i thought i want to get a cool counter that can keep tracks of uh certain things and then you know so like this is 42 yeah okay so so i saw this and uh this originally came as a as a flat piece of wood where you can punch out the various uh, small components and you just glue them up together with uh, USU glue let me see, do I have still have glue? No, the glue is not here but anyway it's a very very famous uh, brand of um, glue for wood although I have been a bit sloppy as you can see you know, there's a bit, little bit of glue all over the places I should ought to clean them up because or maybe I shouldn't, I should just leave it you know <laughs> But anyway, this is pretty cool. This looks steampunk, right? You know, see all the, all the, um, it's pretty well cut, I would say, and it's not really that expensive. Actually, in fact, it's very, very cheap. The only problem is you really, really need to like spend some time assembling this. And each piece of this, uh, this is, as you can see, is actually one piece of wood that I glued in. No, each number. So there's already 13, 30 pieces here together already. And, uh, you know, the wheels and everything. and yeah so basically there's some effort but it feels really good to have this you now ready yeah. okay so another thing that i bought is uh this this is card stand so basically you can place your cards uh in here uh i don't know if maybe i should like get a get a card to show you how it looks like so basically this piece of wood uh is it's a, it's a very, very convenient to have a lot of when you have like some of the stats cards and everything and you know instead of laying them flat you want to have them all in a good view you can always like do it uh, with the card stand so this is how it looks like see pretty good right so i i, I bought some variation because i didn't know uh you know about the sleeping you know whether the, the this works very well for everything or not so actually i bought i bought two types of thickness and uh, two types of lengths in fact so you can see here the I bought two of each so the other type is a uh, is a little bit broader i think you, it allows you to put like a few more cards together in case you want to like overlap for whatever reasons and um they come with different type of curvature so this this is the this is a slight curvature that slide this way there are others that actually slides uh, further you know so so look at the angering yeah so it all depends on uh, what you like so so this is this is like something i pre-ordered um and I asked the shop to actually cut the wood for me so it's not a fantastic job but you know the wood is smooth at least I don't feel that oh, maybe there's a little bit of a sprinter here and there which I need to be careful well, I need to I might sand it a little bit um, and I think you can tell that you know they did a lot of prototyping on this so the wood looks good you no know, looks they even have some uh, you know <laughs> So this this is the 4mm big or something like that. I I don't know. <laughs> so they, they even left some markings here. So it's like yeah. Okay, so this is the this is a card stand. I I didn't have any before. Um I think it's about time I get some and I finally did. And this box is uh I know it looks damn 
weird, you know, it's like your present, you know. It's a generic box, but basically inside, uh, additional tokens I bought. <laughs> so these are very colorful tokens, which I love. Um, you know, if you have seen me playing Tainted Grill, uh, you will know that I use this to replace the various different statistics inside the box, which only comes with a red, red and a blue. Now, now I have all sorts of colors here. These are standee stands. Uh, they comes in various colors. Uh, it's pretty good for um, Gloomhaven and where games where you have standees uh, setting up. Works very well. And uh, so usually when I buy this, I buy in bulk, like maybe about 50 to 100. And uh, then I, if I don't need to use so much of them, I will probably like resell them or maybe uh, give it some to my friends and things like that. So this is our like generic tokens, which are pretty big. I thought it was a bit smaller, but you know, Anyway, it came in that side. So these are like the luxified tokens that you can add to your game. Okay. And so, oh yes, there's maybe one more thing before we actually go. Okay, sorry for the shaky uh, cameras. I still haven't found a way to like put these cameras in a very, very, um, I say stable version of the stand or something. The stand so far didn't work for me because I need to move around, but I'll see how it works. So I bought these boxes. These boxes are pretty good. They have a hooks here, you know, where you can actually store them. And then it's good, like, you know, imagine putting all your chips and all your, uh, you know, gold pieces, everything. It looks really like a pirate treasure. Yeah, and I thought it's like, it's a good way to organize some of the tokens for commonly played games that I want to bring to the table quick and fast. Uh, so for this case, maybe I will use it for the Lords of the Ring. You know, I want to have all my sound the tokens inside here that I can access quickly. And he uses it a lot backs for a lot of the games. Uh, you know, storing some of the tiles together, the maps together. I bought very very big ones. In fact, I think this these are big enough even for the house in uh, Lord of the Rings and some other games. Okay, uh, maybe not the 300 series, but maybe the 200 for Lord of the Rings. I think you'll go in nicely. Okay, let's get to the games now. So there's not a lot of games to, to do today, um, but I will run through some of them. Um, I won't open most of them because most of them are sealed as you can see. So the first, we talk about Clash of Decks. So this is a very, very small deck, uh, but there's actually sufficient cards inside for you to play uh, one or two players for 15 minutes very very quick card games um, you wouldn't imagine it but this game actually is free yeah so you just need to pay for um i think it's about three dollars or something like that it's about three three fifty uh as a form of um coverage for the delivery uh which i think it comes all the way either from europe or is it from us so anyway this is their website and um, in november they are launching um new kickstarter so this was the original kickstarter where they gave away the free basic deck um, they are launching a advanced kickstarter with um, all the expansions uh, you can feel free to check it out it's basically is a very very uh, light harder game i got the starter kit because it's free bound i only got one so um so let's see maybe it's good enough for two players okay next we have let's put these two together because i think these two games uh, will go nicely together. So let me move some of the things aside. Okay. I think from the artwork, you can tell this is um, pretty affiliated to some of the other games that's been around, right? Maybe Unstable Unicorn? Yes, there's a bit of reflection of light, so let me just put it this way. So Happy Little Dinosaur is, um, is a simple, cute game. Uh, as you can see, you know, this uh, looks idiotic but, and also at the same time, it's uh, pretty funny, you know, with uh, the dinosaur still smiling, you know, where Apocalypse is coming. <laughs> yep, and uh, I bought the expansion pack also. Uh, this is the Puris of Purity. As you can see, we have a dinosaur with diapers. So this this is additional decks of cards, uh, which I think is pretty costly for this small packs. But, you know, since I already got the main game, I thought I will get the expansion. There's one expansion I didn't get, which is an expansion for five and six players. Uh, I don't really see recently I will be able to get that many players count, so uh, I actually skipped that. I got the rest. So basically inside you will have uh, player boards, you will have uh, a variety of cards and some tokens. It's a very, very simple game, and I think it'll still be fun, and just 
the look of it is already cute enough to you know just cash in based on that okay another game will be the mine the mine is not really a game yeah so why am i saying that it's like there's no talking uh, both of you are supposed two players are supposed to play this oh you can play four okay but anyway i think most people will try it with two players is um it's trying to have a common mindset towards uh, achieving a goal without saying but then you are supposed to synchronize your playment of cards and then uh, try to win it's not easy and i wouldn't think that it should be easy because this is the aim of the game it's not much of a game in that sense a lot of people say it's just basically some sort of a psychology test uh, yeah where you where you can just go together and see how much you all can cooperate together uh, without really communicating so this is um it's a fun thing i wanted to get this for a very very long time um finally i put my heart to it and get it uh, by the way this is from uh Panasaurus games and they actually publish a lot of other great games as well which i think i'm not sure if i have another one here but i should have some other coming around so this is uh okay so the cover is this way so this is a uh, quite a different game so what does it comes in this cheap ziplock package okay so so the uh, go back a little bit of history if you were to search steel i think there's already a retail version of the game the retail version of the game are uh, real will come with box and everything and probably more cards so this is actually um what what happened was i this is actually a print and play game that means you could actually download the pdf uh, the pictures and stuff and then you could actually get it to uh, get it printed but what i did was i actually i uh, got someone to actually print the card for me maybe i should open up the cards to you know just show you okay, next time maybe i should just prepare you know open all my stuff prior to let me just op let me just uh, put this down a little bit okay okay uh, so so this is this is how the cards are i have already lifted this they gave me the sleeve as well so pretty good quality cards printed so you can see here yeah so it's it looks like it's a, it's a pretty simple game but i heard the rating is pretty good that's why i have chose uh, out so many of the pre and play i got this print up and they even use the, the photo paper you can see there's a photo paper to you know print the cover for me so it's a, it's a pretty nice print it's not that costly it's not that cheap but if you want to get some of this uh printer with very nice cards uh, i mean consider getting a publisher to do it for you okay so next this is the last of the small box it's a deck skate the curse of the the spinix right uh, i hope i got that pronounced right so basically, uh, this looks a little bit like um, it's an escape room game uh, for about one to six players. I think you there's no replay value. You will only play it through it once. And this is a pocket version of uh, some of those big escape game. I, the price range is uh, is actually much lower. I have not tried this series before. So why I got this is because I thought I would just give it a chance. This is published by DV Gyochi. So there, I have talked a little bit about uh, other series such as Exit, uh, Unlock, and recently the Escape in the Room, and so on. So um, I would really want to compare to see if they are better. And this looks like it's a pocket size. If if this really turns out well, I'll probably get others in the series and maybe pack a few uh, on my travels if I get a chance to travel. And then you know, we can spend some of the nights playing this instead of like no wandering around in the streets in some other countries when there isn't really much to do you know not not every country has a very very good uh, places to go at night and i thought this is this is travel friendly it's really travel friendly oh i almost forgot i got this so this is not directly uh say board game stuff but i have i have a very very bad experience with um with printing 3d miniatures and uh, they printed it in uh, in plastics and then I'll take out about three of them to show you so they printed it in plastics and um, what happened was uh, before I even got a chance to paint them uh, I actually dropped the whole box of it uh, the box are actually in uh, those uh, 
containers with a dividers. Uh, so they have plenty of space to each other, to each self. But unfortunately, when I drop, I think everything shattered. So I realized that the plastic really, um, it's not really the way to print miniatures for gaming, especially gaming. So I tried something else. Um, so these people, they offered me prints in metal. So you can see the quality of this. It's pretty good. And this is actually in a pretty, uh, pretty heavy metal. Um, there's some weight to it, which feels very nice. And I think because of the way this is finishing, it looks a little bit like uh, it's already been sun dropped. Uh, yeah, I don't know whether that, if that's the that term refers to a special process, but so it's not perfect. As you can see, there are some yeah. But okay, that aside, I think the print is really good, and uh, this is solid because you know this is metal. I wouldn't expect it to snap anytime soon, and I have printed this series, uh, which actually is the Legend of King Arthur. There's actually seven in this series. Uh, I bought the whole series, and I thought this is fantastic. I love it. I paid a little bit more for it, obviously, and I think this is not from the, the Legend of King Arthur. This is, was an additional, additional print that I asked from in the last series because I wanted to try and. You know, there's this uh, female fighter. I don't know if you can tell. You know, she's a female fighter, female knight with the with a big shield and everything. So I'm gonna use this gen as uh, generic tokens for some of the games where you know, maybe if you come with standees, I prefer to have some something to represent the characters. It looks good. Uh, the only regret is that I didn't have any of the dwarf and stuff which I can use in the um, you know Lord of the Ring. But I was foresee myself buying more of this because this seems to be the sustainable way to go minus the need to print i mean the paint i enjoy painting to be honest but uh, sometimes there's far too much miniatures to paint and i probably cannot finish painting them anyway so this looks like it's a good way to get them to the table okay, now to all the big games so first we have a uh, Tagi. Tagi, uh, this is a Chinese version. Um, I couldn't find the English version available. So I bought this uh, from Taobao, I think. Yep. And um, and I I have to like, patch in have to like patch in and then get the English rules and everything for it. But I haven't really tried it. I heard it's a really good game, so you know when I saw that they have a pre-order for a reprint for this in Chinese, I, I jumped on it anyway. So I thought, mm, let's have a shot at this. This is basically um, some sort of trading games uh, with with a different landscape. I think this is, looks like it was randomized. So every turn, you, every game you play are slightly different. And basically there's a lot of, uh, there's some tokens and everything. I think it will be interesting. Unfortunately, this is only for two players. Yeah, and it takes about an hour, but based on rating, Let's let's hope this couldn't be good. The other three games uh, or four games it would be huge games that I bought and delivered from US. First is Windward. So this is a very, very nice cover. So Windward is uh, it's a type of game where you have um, airships fighting and uh, harvesting things from this uh, dragon-like creature. I don't know if you can see it. It's uh, this dragon-like creature. Okay, probably the focusing is not that great. But anyway, um, so you will you will have to like sabotage each other, uh, steal each other, and then there's different heights in the in the game. You know where the where you can fly lower, higher uh, based on the abilities. And basically, what I heard was it was a Kickstarter. Oh yes, this is confirmed. It was a Kickstarter exclusive, not exclusive, uh, obviously, but Kickstarter started games and. Um, I didn't manage to get it during Kickstarter. I saw it on sale and I thought, uh, why not? Since it looks pretty good. I mean, I like this steampunk kind of um, settings, especially with uh, you know pirates and you know stuff like that. So this looks um, really nice and it plays about one to five player. One player is a very important characteristic nowadays for games because of the pandemic and you know with unavailability of uh, other players it's good to be able to play something alone sometimes 
the publisher is Play Monster. I think they're probably a Kickstarter company. Okay, let me just stack this here. So the second one is uh, Detective. Oh, upside down. <laughs> okay, so the cover doesn't tell you much. It's just a modern day crime board game. And obviously from all this, you know, you see Game of the Year edition. Um, let's see, Dice Tower says it's the best co-op game, best game teaming. Um, and of course, many other awards here, which some of them are I am not even familiar with. So this looks like it's, uh, it's designed in Europe. It, Europe has a lot of, uh, you know, those kind of detective games, which I think is quite impressive. And this looks like, um, oh, there's even a video to teach you how to play this. There's, um, there's also an additional six case here that is um, downloadable. And you can see that there's a lot and a lot of war again. Um, it's even say it's the best game of the year from Dice Tower. So I think that's, that says a lot about this game. It's, it's something that I know nothing about, but because there was a sales going on on Amazon and um, I was referred to by other board game geeks. So they mentioned this game and um, I just clicked in because I am not sure what it is. And I realized that the, a lot while a lot of people complain that the discount didn't work for them, it works for me. So, you know, since it works, uh, I will just buy the bullet and pay for it. And it seems like it's a big box, pretty heavy. I hope I'll enjoy it. I have not really played any of the detective uh, series, to be honest. So this probably will be the first. Next is, um, okay, so this is very, very heavy. There's a lot of miniatures inside. They even showed you two of them here. Oh, I'm sorry about the bad reflection. I guess uh, having this done here is not really a very good idea. So basically, you can see some ninjas and some monks here. So, so Ninja All Star is a competitive games where you know, there's lots of miniature. Oh my God! Can you hear how how hard that is? So see lots of miniatures you know, on the board and the different fractions. Basically, when, when I, I was actually on the fence for this game for a very, very long time because when I went to the Board Game Geek review, I actually saw that there, there probably is some fault or the rules or maybe the game was a bit too complex. The rating wasn't that high, but I thought it's um, the ninja looks cute, you know. Look at all the ninjas. They're a little bit super deformed, I think, which is cute. And each fraction has uh, different colors, ninjas and monks and stuff. And of course, this is like the print painter edition, which I don't have it. I probably won't be able to paint it to this level too. And you can see there's a lot. Oh my God, the rule book's 80 pages, seriously. Okay, maybe that's really the number one thing they look out for or as a form of, you know, uh, precaution. So this is published by Design US, printer in China. Manufactured by Liya International, uh, published by Soda Pop Soda Pop Miniatures Ninja Division So This game has been around for a while It's not a new game um, It just It just I have always just skipped this because of the rating I thought it's bad But I guess on one fine day I finally bought it I hope I won't regret too much So the last one is uh, Above and Below I think this game doesn't need much introduction, but I will just talk a little bit. So, what is Above and Below? So, you, you probably know the name Ryan Laukat. I don't know. Um, I hope I didn't pronounce it badly, okay? But anyway, I have high respect for the designer. He has a lot of good games. Um, I think Sleeping God is from the same designer as well, if I'm not wrong. It, it looks like it's in the same style. Um, so what is above, above and below, obviously. So, you know, you can see catacombs. So this is a very um, narrative based game where there's a story going on and there are some explorations by the various, um, the various uh, villagers you have. And there are encounters as you, as you, as you go along and there's a storyline in it. It's, it's one of those uh, which has a very, very, um, they say there's a lot of a great narrative in the storybook and um, 
I think I missed out on some of the better stuff from the Kickstarter, I think. But I will try to acquire the storybooks and stuff. Um, although I, I imagine I might end up paying a huge price for it. But maybe I should just at least try the try the basic game first and then find out if I like it. It's for two to four players, about 90 minutes. <coughs> Published by Red Raven. Yes, Red Raven Games. Yep. Now I remember. Red Raven Games publish a lot of great games. And uh, they even have this is like the maybe the second or third in the series. There's been a lot of others uh, with similar titles and I think there was one new one that just launched this year which is only available as a pre-order from their webpage although I imagine uh, some store might have retails later I've been wanting to get this game for a long time it's on my Amazon uh, card but it just, you know, the price just keep going up, going down and things like that I finally got it because in the end, um, you know, as I say, it's the same sales that that's going around, and I thought, you know, eventually I will get it. So why not now? And that's how I end up with this game. So I I really hope that I I will enjoy it. And as you can see, I have a lot of games to for me to go for quite a while, especially Detective, and Above and Below. I think these two games will definitely be uh, hitting the table. Uh, I'm not so sure about Ninja or Star. I might you know just keep it in storage for a while. Yeah, so that's all for today's um, game that I got in uh, September, October. There's another two big shipments coming with uh, more games there and uh, bigger titles. So I think um, that's all. Thanks for watching and uh, I'll try to edit the video after I upload this and now include links to all the games I mentioned here. Um, maybe not so much on some of the accessories because um, they are not really available for international market and so it may not, it may, uh, I mean, even if I post a link, it may not be able to like get it uh, from if you are like living somewhere else. But anyway, um, I'll try to, I'll try to put some information on it. If you want any additional information as to where I get certain components and stuff like that, uh, feel free to ask. Uh, just leave a comment and something like that. And okay, I mean, it's all, uh, you know, everybody will say the same thing. Please, you know, like and uh, subscribe. But I'm okay, actually, you know, as long as you enjoy my video. I'm not doing it for profit. If you like it, you know, just give a like. If you like to follow, just subscribe. That's totally fine with me. And yes, thank you for watching. I'll see you again next time.